Today's episode is sponsored by Birch Gold Group. Now, before we get into today's show, I want to thank everybody who joined my first holiday giveaway. But in case you missed it, don't worry. The holiday season is not over. We're just getting started. Just go to winlarry.com right now. I have another giveaway waiting right for you. This Christmas, we are proud to give you something I know many of you have been asking for. That's right. For the first time ever, we're giving away a full subscription to the Epic Times. Wait a second. Watch this. You'll get a weekly print paper delivered right to your door, plus access to all of the Epic Times digital content, including Epic TV, where you can watch my full one-hour show without censorship. I promise this is going to be one of the best gifts you're ever going to get. Besides, what's a better way to celebrate Christmas than having a reliable source of honest news delivered right to your door? So, what are you waiting for? Just go to winlarry.com right now. I will announce three lucky winners live on my show on December 23rd. Don't wait. Go to winlarry.com right now. That's winlarry.com right Right now, I tweeted about the Twitter files expose that revealed that Twitter was massively shadow banning, restricting, and even denying access to conservatives and conservative content. I wanted to see how Trump haters and Democrats would justify this practice, so I read some of the negative comments to my tweets, something I do on occasion when I'm in the mood for insults. But I thought, you know, how could somebody even on the left, even a Trump hater, possibly defend what Twitter was doing prior to Elon Musk taking it over? But never underestimate the ability of much of the country to completely ignore what are really blatant attacks against our very republic. So here's one I read. It's just so concerning that so-called conservative intellectuals, that private companies have internal memos discussing business practices. Amazing, end of quote. In other words, Twitter, uh, Elon Musk uh, this week fired uh, the former FBI general counsel, Jim Baker, who was serving as a top Twitter lawyer. Um, Musk alleges that he may have been involved with uh, countermanding his attempts at transparency. Um, and I was wondering if anyone in the Biden administration was in touch with Baker, either regarding moderation decisions that critics call political censorship or regarding uh, his transparency efforts recently. So it's up to private companies uh, to make these types of decisions. We were not involved. I can say that. We were not involved. The same leftists who dismissed the Twitter files on the grounds that it's a private company have no problem using government to compel a private company to provide health insurance, minimum wage, racial diversity and sensitivity training, paid medical and family leave, requiring at least one female member on its board of directors, a California law that was recently struck down as unconstitutional, promptly followed by another California law signed by Governor Gavin Newsom that requires at least one member of the disadvantaged community, member of the LGBTQ whatever, to be on the board of a privately, publicly held company headquartered in California. It too will be struck down, but detailed, right? Move along, nothing to see here. Besides, Twitter, of course, is not shadow banning, especially based on ideology, right? Uh, I want to read a few quotes about Twitter's practices, and I just want you to tell me if they're true or not. Uh, social media is being rigged to censor conservatives. Is that true of Twitter? No. I don't know what Twitter is up to. It sure looks like to me that they're censoring people, and they ought to stop it. Uh, are you censoring people? No. Twitter shadow banning prominent Republicans. It's bad. Is that true? No. This idea of shadow banning is something that he's brought up, which mm. is essentially this concept that Twitter would allow you to post something, but then effectively make it invisible, make it not show up in searches. Right. This has been widely and debunked. The president, by the way, has tweeted about this idea of shadow right. banning, saying it's not good. We're going to look into this discriminatory illegal practice. He's tweeting about other tech companies just this morning as well. But as you point out, Twitter's like, dude. Not so much. They, yes. I mean, this has been debunked by Twitter. They say that this is not something that they actually actively engage in. The president called you out for shadow banning. What is the truth around that idea? So I, I think a lot of the, in, the, the statements behind the statement and the question behind the question is, um, look, shadow banning is a very widely defined term. There's not one single definition. Um, so definition that we found that seems to resonate with the most people is, um, you know, not amplifying particular messages or if someone puts out a, a tweet, hiding that tweet from everyone uh, without that person who tweeted it knowing about it. So, but the real question behind the question is, 
are we doing something according to political ideology or viewpoints? And we are not. The claims are frightening. Republicans are being shadow banned from Twitter. President Trump is tweeting that this is discriminatory and illegal. Cue the internet outrage. So what exactly is shadow banning? It sounds like nonsense from a science fiction show. Guys, Steve's been shadow banned by a Demogorgon in the Upside Down. For anyone who is not in the mix with the angry side of social media, this whole concept must sound bizarre, but there is a real thing called shadow banning. Unlike what Trump is claiming, it is not happening to Republicans on Twitter. Let's break it down. Twitter does not shadow ban based on political ideology. No, it doesn't do this at all. Do you discriminate more on philosophy like anti-conservative versus pro-liberal? No, our, our policies and our algorithms don't take into consideration any affiliation, philosophy, or viewpoint. That's hard to stomach. I'm not, I, I just, there wouldn't, we wouldn't be having this discussion if there wasn't a general agreement that, that your company has discriminated against conservatives, most of whom happen to be Republicans. I, I believe that we have found impartial outcomes, and, and those are what we intend to fix and continue to measure. Will the lack of a red wave during the midterms lead to a more emboldened Joe Biden? More wasteful government spending? Higher taxes? How will you protect your hard-earned savings from the reinvigorated left? The answer? Gold. Gold is the world's oldest, most proven form of currency. It's there for you when inflation soars, when other assets go sideways. And that's why Birch Gold is so thrilled to introduce a new product that reimagines gold as currency, the gold back. This month, you'll get a free gold back for every $5,000 purchase when you convert an existing IRA or 401k into a precious metals IRA with Birch Gold by December 22nd. Birch Gold will help you own gold and silver in a tax sheltered account. Visit LarryForGold.com to claim your free info kit on gold. Then talk to one of their precious metal specialists. Plus, with every purchase you make before December 22nd, you're going to get a free gold back. This is a great stocking stuffer just in time for Christmas. Once again, visit LarryForGold.com. That's LarryForGold.com. Protect your savings with gold today. As I said, it doesn't do this at all. Are you censoring people? No. Twitter shadow banning prominent Republicans. It's bad. Is that true? No. Like I said, they don't do this at all. <laughs> Let me ask about specific questions. Has Twitter ever been involved in shadow banning? We do not shadow ban according to political ideology or viewpoint or content, period. Uh, we, every, every model that we have on the network uh, is really looking at the behaviors on the network. Uh, we take those behaviors as signals. And I do want to point out that these signals evolve uh, minute, like minute by minute, hourly by hourly. These are not scarlet permanent letters that people then take on as a badge and will never be ranked high in search or not allowed to trend or ranked high in conversation. So these are models that are looking at behaviors and Behaviors of bad faith actors who intend to manipulate, distract, divide uh, a conversation um, or to unfairly amplify their content, which they didn't earn. So those are the signals that factor in. Uh, and, and we do rank uh, search. We do rank trends and we do rank conversations accordingly. That does not affect one's timeline. If you follow someone on Twitter, you're going to see them in your timeline. Now, we do uh, rank the timeline for relevance, so it might take some scrolling to see everything. But what, you can also what, turn that ranking off in the settings. Did I mention that they don't do this at all? The president called you out for shadow banning. What is the truth around that idea? So I, I think a lot of the, in, the, the statements behind the statement and the question behind the question is, um, look, shadow banning is a very widely defined term. There's not one single definition. Um, so the definition that we found that seems to resonate with the most people is, um, you know, not amplifying particular messages. Or if someone puts out a, a tweet, hiding that tweet from everyone uh, without that person who tweeted it knowing about it. So 
But the real question behind the question is, are we doing something according to political ideology or viewpoints? And we are not, period. We do not look at content with regards to political viewpoint or ideology. We look at behavior. And we use that behavior as a signal to, uh, to add to relevance. We need to constantly show that we are not adding our own bias, which I fully admit is, is, left, is, is more left-leaning. Uh, and I think it's important to articulate our bias and to, and to, and to share, with, share it with people so that people understand us. But we need to remove all bias from how we act and our policies and our enforcement. People have these assumptions that, that you're out to get them or something. Uh, that, and which is why transparency matters so much. Yeah. Uh, which is why being open about our own personal views and, and what we think about what's happening is, is important. And I'll, I'll fully admit that I haven't done enough of that. I haven't, I haven't done enough of like articulating my own personal objectives with this service and, and my own personal objectives in the world. And, and uh, I, I think people see a faceless corporation that has, they don't assume that humans are in it, you know, or that they're genuine or authentic. They just assume based on what the output is. And, and that's, that's on us, it's on me. To my friend who said, it's a private company, I'm shocked that conservatives would be surprised at their internal memos regarding business practices at a private company. It's one thing to suppress conservative content and conservatives. It's another not to tell them you're doing it. It's a whole nother level of evil to deny that you're doing it. That the legacy media is not covering this, even if to say it's a nothing burger, is simply astounding. A Fox News alert, part three of the Twitter files revealing executives met with the FBI and DHS on a weekly basis around the 2020 election. But the mainstream media doesn't seem concerned. Between ABC, CBS, and NBC, there were zero minutes of coverage, you heard me write zero, on the first and second batch of the files. So will they cover part three? Jason Chaffetz, Fox News contributor and former Utah congressman, is here to react. I mean, Jason, zero minutes. Why, why won't they cover it? I mean, it, Twitter is doing something like 90 billion impressions uh, every day. They, they, they don't cover it because it makes liberals and Democrats look bad because of the positions they've taken. And it, it justifies and, and exemplifies uh, what Republicans were saying and conservatives. We were saying, hey, we're being shadow banned. Hey, you're blocking us. You're not allowing us to, do, to play on an even playing field. And now that that's being proven right, they're not going to cover it. They're not going to do that story. Well, and government really used the whole Russia collusion lie to kick all of this off, right? They said, oh, we have to protect Americans from this disinformation, you know, from all this Russia stuff. Yeah. I mean, that's really where it started, isn't I, it? I guess what really bothers me is there are multiple agencies and personnel within the federal government, paid by us, paid by taxpayers, that went out there and used the justification to shadow ban and suppress and knock down stories. It was all based on the idea that, Oh, this is Russian disinformation. It wasn't. That was a lie. They were doing the same things that Russia and China do within their own countries. And so they used that justification to meet their political goals. And that's why uh, Jim Jordan and James Comer in Congress are going to go after these people. They're going to have to come testify, do transcribed interviews, and hopefully get to the truth because that is election engineering. That is not protecting us from Russia and, and China and the, and the others. What do you think the impact of it all was on the country? Uh, I think it was significant because the way to communicate in this day and age is very much on your phone and social media. And so, and my guess is this isn't just about Twitter. I mean, thank goodness for Elon Musk and being able to expose it. But when we start looking into under the hood with Facebook and Instagram and these others, I think we're going to see the same thing. And I assure you, I promise you that whatever Twitter is doing pre Elon Musk, is currently being done on steroids at YouTube, at Google, at Meta, at Instagram. Frankly, it's a wonder that elections are as close as they are. Look at this. This is a graph showing the political contributions of a lot of our organizations. Many of them are in the media. Look at this. Netflix, 99.6% of all the employee donations during the midterms went to the Democrats. Twitter, 98.7%. Apple, 97.5%. Alphabet Google, 
96%. Facebook, 94.5%. Notice any trend here? Microsoft, 91.7%. Amazon, 89.3%. You know what's frightening? That the left, Democrats, legacy media, Hollywood, academia, big tech, think most conservatives, not just Trump, to quote Biden, as semi-fascists. Therefore, they see suppression of conservatives and conservative content on social media as an act of patriotism. Independent Glenn Greenwald wrote the following. Democrat partisans live in a cloistered world, so they utter such obvious lies without realizing how transparent the lies are. Big tech's workforce is almost all liberals. They donate to Dems at a rate of 95%, end of quote. This is flat out election interference. Epoch Times interviewed Newt Gingrich, who said this, if you take the president of the United States off Twitter, referring to Trump, what did that cost? If you are Google and the last four days of every month you refuse to deliver Republican fundraising emails, what does that cost? End of quote. Gingrich was referring to Trump and Twitter's ban and allegations that Google pushed millions of the RNC political campaign emails to spam folders so that people never saw them. <laughs> By the way, Jim Carrey, Elton John, and Mark Ruffalo have all announced they are leaving Twitter by making their announcement on Twitter. Now, don't forget, hit that like button, hit subscribe, and be sure to scroll down and get on our mailing list because every now and then, for whatever reason, some of our videos do not make it on YouTube. Want to make sure you don't miss anything? Get on the mailing list. That way, you'll always be apprised whenever we have any new video. And if you want to throw a little something in the tip jar, you can always donate to the show to make sure you always get a reliable, fast-paced, hard-hitting show.